I must get rid of this fog for a moment, my boy, he said. But the button he pressed was not the button he wanted. Hello, cried the cheerful voice. You pressed the rest and relaxation button. Here is a mug of milk and a chocolate biscuit. And here's a tune I've just made up. A grey day is a day which is grey. It's grey in the beginning and it's grey at the end. It was awful and it wasn't a bit relaxing. Mercifully, the sound brought Mrs Brolly into the room. Brolly, what is going on here? she said. And in the next moment, the music stopped and the fog cleared as if by magic, except for the bit which still lingered round Mr Brolly's hat. With the clearing of the fog, Harry saw that the little cloud was licking chocolate from his mouth. Mickey, he said, and floated over to the computer to find the button which made these delightful objects. Harry and Mr Polly stepped out into the garden. The fog grew so thick that neither one could see the other. Mr Polly, called Harry. My boy, called Mr Polly. Then, from the fog, there came an astonishing mixture of noise. The sound of a barking dog, the clatter of hooves, and the sound of a ship's foghorn. As Harry stood in bewilderment, he heard a dull thud. My boy, came the voice of Mr. Brolly. I seem to have uh, walked into a tree. Go to the control room and ask the computer to get rid of the fog. Harry ran in the direction which he hoped would lead him to the weather house. When at last he stopped, all sounds from the garden had ceased. Then, from the stillness and silence, there came an icy tinkling and a familiar voice. Harry, it said. Oh, Harry. It was Jack Frost. Where are you? said Harry. Where indeed? said Jack Frost. That's the beauty of fog. It hides me so well. I can drift about and nip a plant here, a small animal there. As he spoke, Harry felt a sharp, cold nip on his arm. Tender plants and small animals can't survive a nip from me. The icy fingers of Jack Frost closed around his wrist. Harry tugged himself free and began to run. As he fled blindly over the garden, he saw a strange shape making its way towards him. Quack, said the duck's head drolly. Harry took hold of the handle and was carried swiftly to where the door of the weather house kitchen stood open. Harry turned and looked back. There was no sign of Jack Frost. Mr. Brolly came walking up the path towards the weather house. You must admit, it is beautiful. It is a very special fog. It is Brolly, said Mrs. Brolly. As they gazed, the fog began to creep up the garden. But that's the trouble with a special fog, said Mrs. Brolly. It's like a stray cat. Once you're kind to it, it will never leave you. Yes, sighed Mr. Brolly. I uh, had got fond of it despite the hullabaloo in the garden. I called it a Fogson, you know. Couldn't you keep it in a jar or something, said Harry. What a bright little chap he is, said Mr. Brolly. As soon as Harry bent to touch it, the fog drew back. Harry sat at the bottom of the garden by the pond. By his side was the big glass jar which had held Old Ferocious, the strong wind which Harry had once set free. A candle burned inside the jar, for evening had fallen, and dusk and fog were creeping between the trees. At the other end of the garden sat Mrs. Brolly on the porch step. She was holding a jar. As Harry sat and gazed at Mrs. Brolly, he wondered if it was she who had caused the hullabaloo in the garden, just to remind Mr. Brolly about the dangers of fog. He wondered, too, if it had been Mrs. Brolly who had sent the duck's head Brolly to rescue him from Jack Frost. 
On the water of the pond, the water boatman was making his way home. As he neared the water's edge and the reeds where he lived, he saw the light of a candle. He was so surprised by this that he missed his stroke. He said in annoyance, for he was usually a good rower. As he righted himself, the water of the pond suddenly pitched into high, strong waves and the reeds were bent. Old Ferocious was coming home. The candle went out and the jar shook. Harry held it tightly. I've got him! I've got him, Mrs. Brolly! he shouted and ran to the welcoming light of the kitchen. Around him the fog was vanishing, blown into Mrs. Brolly's jar. He awoke and found himself in his bed and under his patchwork quilt. Getting out of bed, he went to the window and looked out. The garden was full of faint mist and sunshine. It was Harry's own weather, the one he had invented with the help of Little Cloud and the computer. Mrs. Brolly? Mr. Brolly? Look! cried Harry, turning to the weather house, and then, Oh, Mr. Brolly, he said. For only Mr. Brolly stood at the weather house door, and his hat was still hidden in a little patch of fog.